Hello there, a very good evening and welcome to another edition of Primetime News on TV1. I'm Charlotte Benedict for the News First Team. And I'm Thiruni Karuna Ratna. Here are our headlines for tonight. Sri Lanka ready to celebrate the Singhala and Tamil New Year. The New Year dawns at 9.50pm on Saturday. Eight Sri Lankans rescued from the Myanmar terrorist group handed over to the custody of the Thai ambassador. Decision on presidential candidate pending but will contest under the flowerbud symbol, says Namal. Nimal Siripala's appointment is wrong. Maithripala's faction presents several proposals to resolve the SLFP crisis. Two police officers arrested over the alleged assault on youth causing lifelong injuries. Lanka Satosa to further reduce prices of goods for the new year. The Singhala and Tamil New Year is only two days away. Everyone is preparing to welcome the dawn of the new year. Now, we took to the streets to take a look at the preparations among the general public of Sri Lanka for the Singhala and Tamil New Year. There are many customs and traditions linked to the Singhala and Tamil New Year that makes the festival a truly colourful one. Everyone is preparing to welcome the dawn of the new year. Maharagama, which is famous for textiles, was more crowded than usual today. Many people had also arrived at the Paliogori Economic Center. Sweet meats are considered to be a very important aspect of the New Year celebration. Although the festive sweet meats are prepared at home in villages, those living in more urbanized areas do not usually prepare these sweet meats at home. We are on the bustling streets of Colombo. Now, Singhala and Tamil New Year is around the corner, uh, to say exactly in two days. We can see that uh, most of Colombo's population are on the streets of Colombo shopping for Aurudu. Uh, not just uh, for food or beverages, but also for clothes and many other uh, necessities that they would like to prepare for Aurudu. Uh, and we can also see that uh, most of the Colombo's crowd is going back to their hometowns to celebrate Aurudu with their uh, extended families and relatives in their hometowns. So we can see long queues of uh, people waiting to get public transport, the buses and the trains. And we can also see a lot of people going out of Colombo in their own vehicles. Uh, we can also see that there's so many uh, Aurudu sweets are on sale in Colombo. Now, if we go back, uh, to few years or some years back, back then, um, if you take my childhood, back then we used to go to our parents or with our parents, we used to go to our grandparents' house and all the relatives get together and we make these Aurudu sweets or Aurudu Kavini. We get together and we make these sweets uh, at home. But now, fast forwarding to 2024, we can see a drastic change in this trend. We can see most of Colombo's people are buying or purchasing these uh, out of the sweets, uh, the ready-made out of the sweets from the vendors. Uh, but why is this? Why aren't these people making uh, their sweets at home like they used to back then? Uh, why are they buying these off from the vendors? Let's go out, talk to some of them and figure out why is that. Now you can see around me these streets are full of people uh, shopping and buying food, buying clothes. They are shopping for Singhala and Tamil Aurudu. Now people are, um, some of them told us that they are having economic difficulties but still they have to uh, celebrate Aulut Aurudu or uh, the Singhala and Tamil New Year. So we can see people are walking across, people are celebrating the Aurudu in grand scale this time, uh, buying their favourite clothes, buying their favourite sweets and preparing for Aurudu which is in two days. Um, we won't have anything planned for New Year's but we are excited to see the fireworks like maybe from the ship um, or tomorrow outside. Um, just see how the vibes go is going to be in the, in the city and just 
I don't know, enjoy, experience it. Yeah. Even though the new year is uh, labelled as Singhala and Tamil New Year, it's not just Singhala or the Tamil communities that are celebrating the new year. We can see so many Muslims, so many burghers celebrating the new year along with the Singhala and Tamil community. The two festivities, the two new years of uh, three different communities came together at the same time uh, and that has brought so much of happiness among the people where people are shopping together, people are eating together, people are celebrating these two festivities all together. Yeah, this year we are very much happy as the Muslims and the Hindus and Tamils, everybody's New Year has come together. So everybody is so happy and even, even if you come to a, a market like everybody is mixed, you know, all uh, religious people, there is no uh, differences between everybody. Many living and working in the bustling cities are preparing to travel back to their home villages. We are currently at the central bus stand of Colombo and we can see that massive crowds of people are getting into buses to go back to their hometowns, going out of Colombo and back to their hometowns to celebrate this Singhala and Tamil New Year along with their families, relatives and loved ones. However, several special bus services are in operation in line with the festive season. We were only able to operate about 700 to 730 buses from the Colombo Central Bus Depot during ordinary days. We have increased our fleet of buses to 1,400. Also, we have deployed 90 buses to travel along expressways. In addition to that, special bus services are also in operation to areas outside Colombo like Kandy, Kurunagala, Gaul, Matara, Hambantota, Ampara and Trincomalee. The Deputy General Manager of the Railways Department, V.S. Polvattage, spoke about the railway services available during the festive season. In addition to the daily long-distance train journeys, we have scheduled special express train journeys from Colombo to Badulla and Badulla to Colombo until the 15th. We have also scheduled an express train to come from Badulla to Colombo in the morning on the 15th. In addition to that, we have added several train journeys along the coastal railway lines. We have provided the necessary facilities for passengers who want to travel to areas such as Trincomalee and Batiklo as well. The general public will also have to be cautious to prevent any accidents during the festive season. Many people are going on trips during this festive season and people in cities are going back to their hometowns. Many do not hesitate to bathe in water bodies without looking into whether or not it is safe. We receive reports of many incidents that result in death of several people. 36% of accidents reported during the festive season is due to the use of fireworks, while 17% of incidents that go on to visually impair people are caused due to the unsafe use of fireworks. If your child suffers an injury to their eyes after playing with fireworks and they are admitted to the hospital, do not start running behind the doctor and asking them about the condition of your children's eyes. If there is any accident that affects your eyes, get yourselves hospitalized immediately. Do not apply or use any sort of medication without first seeking medical advice. The dawn of the new year. Saturday, the 13th of April at 9.05 a.m. Auspicious time. From Saturday, the 13th of April at 2.41 p.m. to Sunday, the 14th of April at 3.29 a.m. Preparation of meals. Saturday the 13th of April at 11.06 p.m. Resuming work, trading and consuming meals. Sunday the 14th of April at 12.06 a.m. Singhala and Tamil New Year 2024. The Welfare Division of the Defence Ministry celebrated the Singhala and Tamil New Year yesterday uh, the defense at the Defense Forces Headquarters Complex in Batarmulla, and this event was graced by President Ranil Vikramasinghe. The event, meticulously organized to pay homage to tradition and heritage, showcased a diverse array of traditional sports and captivating cultural presentations, skillfully curated by the dedicated staff of the Ministry of Defence. President Ranil Vikramasinghe was warmly welcomed by the Secretary to the Ministry of Defence, retired General Kamal Gunaratna, marking the commencement of the festivities. Embracing the spirit of the occasion, the President engaged in the prize-giving of the Out of the Kumaria competition. 
The eight Sri Lankans who were rescued from a Chinese criminal gang in Myanmar have been handed over to the Sri Lankan embassy in Thailand. Now, Sri Lankan ambassador to Myanmar, Janaka Bandara, said measures will be taken to send them to Sri Lanka very soon. A few months ago, news first disclosed that 56 Sri Lankan youth were being held in an area controlled by an armed group along the Thai border in Myanmar and were forced to commit various cyber crimes. They were taken to Myanmar on the promise of data entry jobs. Following the discovery, eight of them were rescued and they were held at the central police station in Myawedi, Myanmar to investigate their involvement in crime. Following investigations, they were sent to Thailand today via the Thai-Myanmar Friendship Bridge. Then on Sampurnin, Myanmar Deshin, Anarakshita Kalapin, Nidas Putkalin Vidyata, Sri Lanka. They were freed from the danger zone in Myanmar and brought under the custody of the Sri Lankan Embassy. This was the result of the coordinated and extensive effort by the Sri Lankan Embassy in Myanmar, the Sri Lankan Embassy in Thailand, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Colombo. The Sri Lankan Embassy in Thailand, the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Colombo, and the Sri Lankan Embassy in Myanmar will take measures to send them to Sri Lanka over the next few days with the support of the International Organization. Organization for Migration. Myanmar However, nearly 50 Sri Lankan youth are still trapped in two other locations. The Sri Lankan ambassador in Myanmar said measures are being taken to release them promptly. The eight Sri Lankan youth who were rescued were being held at a location near the Moy River, close to Miawedi town. 18 more Sri Lankans are being held in a building located close to the Thai border, directly around 5 kilometers away from the other location. The third location, where 28 other youth are being held, is located at a distance of 26 kilometers from the Miawindi town. When's the election? National organizer of the Sri Lanka, Podu Jana Pirumuna, Nama Rajapaksa, says that the presidential candidate nominated by the SLPP will contest under the symbol of the flower bud. Speaking in Kandy today, he said, however, the candidate for the presidential election has not been decided yet. Namal Rajapaksa, who arrived in Kandy, visited the temple of the Tooth Relic and called on the Mahanayaka of the Malwatu chapter of the Siam sect, Most Venerable Thibbatu Ave Shri Sumangala Theru. After obtaining blessings, he spoke to media. I think there is good competition within our party to choose a presidential candidate. We have many options. We have entrepreneurs, businessmen, owners of media institutions. Some even claim that they are the ones who created our party. We have many options, so we can choose a good candidate. My personal stance is that none of us are non-partisan. I am part of the SLPP. I believe Ranil Vikramasinghe represents the UNP. But such an understanding can be reached when running for an election, so it is a decision that he and his party should reach. If we are to support that decision, it is a decision that the group has to reach and not a single person. When President Ranil Vikrama Singh was unable to become president of this country through an election, it was the SLPP parliamentary group majority that made him president. If I think of myself as a state minister in the next government, I can also openly say the next candidate is Ranil Vikramasinghe. But as a party, there's a set of policies brought by Mahindra Rajapaksa. And if President Ranil Vikramasinghe agrees to those policies, and if the party decides that Ranil Vikramasinghe is our common candidate, then we are ready to support him unconditionally. 
there is no issue. Wins the election. Is there so PP split on fielding a candidate for the presidential election? Parliamentarian SB Distanaika expressed his views on this matter at a press conference today. Some ministers and state ministers are thinking about President Ranil Vikramasinghe. No matter what, none of us can forget the role he played in bringing the country's economy to a certain level. Our party was destroyed and turned into ashes and we are now rising up from it. I say to the ones who have taken positions in parliament, ministerial positions, state ministerial positions, in the name of the party, cabinet ministers and all those holding office, do not let the party split. Wins the election. While the debate on the candidate to be fielded at the presidential election continues within the SLPP, the Sri Lanka Freedom Party is also facing a massive crisis within the party. The enjoining order issued by the Colombo District Court preventing Maitri Pala Sirisena from holding office as the chairman of the party will continue to be in effect until the 18th of April. The enjoining order was issued following a petition filed by former President Chandrika Bandar Naika Kumaratunga. In the meantime, a communique has been issued stating that Nimal Siripala de Silva has been appointed as the acting chairman of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party following a meeting of the party held under the auspices of former President Chandrika Bandar Naika Kumaratunga. The headquarters of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party is currently sealed and a police investigation is underway. Meanwhile, former Secretary General of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, Dasiri Jayasekara, convened a media briefing today and said the appointment of Nimal Siripala de Silva is illegal. How is Nimal Siripala, who is listed as a respondent in Maitri Pala Sirisena's charge sheet, made acting chairman as soon as the chairman is removed? This order was obtained against him as well. MP Dasiri Jayasekara made another revelation at this media briefing. We will prove with clear evidence the influence a single attorney has exerted on the judges of this country. Ranil Vikramasinghe does not do it, but a lawyer does it using his name. I will reveal these details in parliament and also reveal his name. He is a president's counsel and he exerts influence on the judiciary and the judges. He invited me and we spoke about it. He requested me to rejoin the party. I have no intention of holding the post of General Secretary now. The reason is, one of our fellow MPs holds the post now and he should be allowed to continue his work. Our organizers also spoke to me on how we should proceed if I were to rejoin the party. I am also in talks with the party chairman on how to rejoin the party and uplift the party. Maitri Pala Sirisena's faction also presented several proposals to resolve the party crisis. If we act democratically, we should reach decisions regarding our party based on the majority. We will bring organizers, electoral organizers and district organizers to one place. Minister Nimal Siripala de Silva, Minister Mahinda Amaravira, La Santa Alagiawana, Dumina de Sanayaka and anyone else can come there and openly seek the organizers' opinion. Let's respect the court decision. But it is very important for this country to know where we stand as a party and where organizers stand. We will invite them all, open it to the media and see what their decision is. We don't need to fight outside, give up your ministerial posts. There is no need to go to courts. Maitri Pala Sirisena is like your father and your brother. The four of you can discuss this together at one table. Maitri Pala Sirisena is the only leader I have seen in the world who gave up his power. He will give up his power in the party. If the three of you give up your ministerial post and stop supporting the government and tell him you want to uplift the party and ask for an opportunity, 
he will allow you to do it. He is a leader like that. Sir, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question. A group of Putlam district organizers of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party engaged in religious observances and made a plea to the gods at the Munneswaram Kovil in Chilau. They pleaded with the gods to protect the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. <laughs> When's the election? The People's Tomorrow organization says that a planned program is being implemented to create chaos within political parties. They say this poses a threat to the country's democracy. Ranil Vikrama Singhala, Deng, Deshapan na pitiye, Deshapan na buru gahe lagga hana. Ranil Vikrama Singha and his group are now playing political games. They are using various political parties and various jokers in those parties to destroy each other. Maitri Parler is being used to remove Basil. Chandrika Kumarathunga is being used to remove Maitri Pala. However, it is clear that all these games will end in a horrific result. As the general public, we believe that there must be a good mechanism within all parties. The activities of the political parties must be wholesome. Members of parties must be people who are qualified individuals who can work for the country. As the civil society of the country, we are against the political parties in Sri Lanka being destroyed for the needs of a few senior citizens who are incapable of even walking without any support. If Ranil Vikramasinghe and his group infiltrates political parties and destroys them, they are causing massive damage to the political fabric of this country. We know what Ranil Vikramasinghe is preparing to do. Ranil Vikramasinghe, who has been moving from one party to the other, is now turning towards the Samagi Janabalavegya. He is very talented and knows how to create internal strife and pit one person against the other. We would like to inform politicians in these political parties. You are important to us as long as you engage in good politics. Those who take the bait and play political games are of no use to this country. Politicians in Sri Lanka have a duty not to fall prey to these political games of Ranil Vikramasinghe. Gatavalata how novi in merate desha palak nyenta yam vaga ki makti enawa. Wins the debate. There is much public discourse ongoing on the debate between Sajid Premadasa and Anura Kumara Disanayaka. Now, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa expressed his opinion on the matter at an event held in Tanamalvela. Who has a good plan? Who has a vision? Who will show progress? Who has already put his plan into action and is implementing it in the country? Sajid Premadasa is ready to debate from it. The country is facing a major economic crisis. I have a team analyzing the economic crisis. There is also an opposition. Let's pit these teams against each other and see whose plans are better. I would like to clearly state that after all of these debates, the people in the country will decide who is the leader who works for the country and who is the leader that only talks. News first with the people. Amma, Amma the kadi ge na tan taata de. Mau, Ammi mada lista ke dala thi puna. Hey, do ata monhari o ne de. Mukut ne. Mangu ya ke taata mata tya makkama tere na. Osa pu emo be sauk ke kote saath. Itin ayu baya obe phaule aygen hamgarne. Eva, Vishwasa in peramone. Welcome back to the news. One person has been injured after police opened fire on a lorry transporting cattle. Now, police opened fire at the vehicle in Doleli at the Kananke after the driver of the lorry had failed to heed police orders to stop. The police had travelled to the area near the Kananke Raja Mahaviharya early this morning after receiving a tip-off that cattle was being loaded into a lorry. 
The police said that three people who were there attempted to flee with the cow. Later, the police officers who were on a mobile patrol ordered the lorry driver to stop at Dolali Adda. However, the driver disobeyed the orders and drove away, prompting police to open fire. One person in the lorry was shot in the leg while the other two suspects ran away. The person injured in the shooting has been admitted to the Karapide Teaching Hospital and has been identified as a resident of Ginthota Mapugala. News First correspondent said that five number plates were also found in the lorry. A police sergeant and a police constable of the Madhavachya police have been remanded till the 16th of April in connection to the assault of a 23-year-old youth in the Thula Valley village in Madhavachya. They were remanded after being produced to the Kabitigolava Magistrates Court. Police spokesperson DIG attorney Nihal Thaldu has said they were suspended from service. The police spokesperson further said that four other police officers related to the incident have been transferred to the Kabitigolava police station. The police spokesperson further said that four other police officers related to the incident were transferred to the Kabitigo Lava police station. It was alleged that the assault took place on the 7th of April when a lorry that was driving recklessly was stopped by traffic police and the two passengers were arrested. The injured youth was first admitted to the Madhavachya hospital but was later transferred to the Anuradhapura teaching hospital. Following the admission, the youth underwent surgery at the Anuradhapura teaching hospital where one of his testicles was removed. People have different interests and vehicles is one of them. Collecting model buses and trains is a hobby for many across the world. Now, this report is about the Batiklo model railway system, which was constructed at a substantial cost and which we came by by chance. And this is the report on the Batiklo model railway system. People have a lot of hobbies. They have to ride, they love to do a lot of things. But this is a different story, a different hobby. Let's have a look. Dev Darshan's train craze started at an early age when there was no internet or computers, even though many said that his addiction to trains will fade away. It didn't. So, Mr. Darshan, I believe this is very interesting. So, tell me about this whole thing, the Batiklo Model Railway. Okay, Batiklo Model Railway is, is, is my hobby and I have been doing this in, in, this, uh, in this room for more than um, around four years now. So this room was purposely built for the model railway because I had one at home and then that was taken down and it's now I'm having it in here. Uh, so this is uh, quite a large layout. It has around 200 meters of track in two levels. Uh, this is uh, one of the largest um, model railways in Sri Lanka. And uh, so this is actually 1 is to 76 or 1 is to 87 scale. And um, uh, they, they both, uh, uh, they are called HO or double O scale and this is actually, uh, this layout is fully automated and it's run by, uh, it's, it's called the DCC system and it's run by the uh, iTrain software. So it's fully automated, it will, uh, can run automatically on its own. So people have dreams, people want to create a lot of new things through this world. So what made you create this very clue model railway? Uh, because it, it was a childhood hobby and before I left England I had a look and then I was really uh, you know interested in uh, doing it because uh, you know it had the technology it had the um, you know artistic side of it uh, but um, I personally didn't actually believe that it will be this big and uh, this you know good looking and beautiful as well so when I started uh, uh, getting involved with the hobby I actually found a lot of things that I didn't know that I could do. So that is uh, that is what one thing that was surprising for me. But uh, for this, when you when you when you when you put your mind into it, you 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 look at YouTube and all these things, you experiment, and you know you get so involved, and you want to get everything perfectly done. It's, it's a wonderful hobby, and um, there are so many elements to it. It's like running a real um, uh, train. Um, uh, railway, you have to keep the tracks clean and you have to service the locomotives, you have to uh, do the painting, you know, uh, you know everything is very, very interesting and you, uh, you know, you don't get bored because you can do electronics and if you are bored with it, then you can just stop and do, do some painting because 
far as the model railway is uh, concerned, you know, it never ends. You know, you keep on adding and adding. So it is, it is, um, it is, it is known as the uh, world's best hobby. World's best hobby. Okay. Yes. How many trains do we have here? I have around twenty trains now. Twenty yeah. trains. So yeah. how long will it take to you know create everything? I mean, it's a pretty big area. It's yeah. not just one railway track. So okay. how long did it take? Uh, it, it, this layout in here it took me around four years. So Mr. Darshan, uh, I believe you have created your hobby as one of the best things in this world, right? We have created a model railway. So there will be a lot of people, a lot of young kids who will be watching this, who will be having a lot of dreams, a lot of aspirations. So what is your message to all of them? Because you created your hobby into something very, very big. So what is your message that you can give? Um, my, my message is, I think uh, it's, uh, you know, well, when you are doing a hobby, you know, you put your mind to it and, you know, you're, you're sold into it and, you know, um, then you enjoy what you do. So, you know, so I don't get stressed about this, you know, you know, I don't hurry things. So, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's actually, when you have a hobby, it's, it's relaxing, you know, it's time consuming, you have to time it correctly because, you know, you don't want to start a hobby when you're studying, you know, when you're doing your A-levels, you don't want to start a hobby. So, so those things you have to be a bit careful, but when you, when you, when you have the time, uh, uh, then it, it's always good to, because there, there might be some, uh, you know, people might not like it, your home people might not like it, but you know, there is always a good side to it because uh, if you do, your kids will do it, you know, they will ask questions, they will come and help. And uh, so, you know, there are a lot of aspects to it, you know, it, it's not about you only spending time. It, it's uh, always, uh, there is uh, so, so many elements to it and uh, there are so many things can actually um, uh, go right and uh, people can learn and others can learn and you know uh, and it keeps you occupied you know this country needs people with a vision like Dev Darshan people who don't give up on their goals easily people who are not limited to the railway systems built by the British The Asian Development Bank said Sri Lanka shows signs of recovery but must maintain reform momentum. More details on the News First Finance report. The News First Finance report. Sri Lanka shows signs of recovery but must maintain reform momentum, says ADB. The Asian Development Bank's annual flagship economic publication, the Asian Development Outlook, April 2024, forecast Sri Lanka's economy to record moderate growth of 1.9% in 2024 and 2.5% in 2025 following two consecutive years of contractions. Sri Lanka is showing signs of recovery with green shoots emerging in the second half of 2023. Inflation has decelerated to single digits, foreign exchange reserves continue to be built up and the exchange rate has appreciated. Tourist arrivals and remittance inflows continue to show a commendable recovery while supply conditions have improved. ADB's growth forecast hinges on the continuation of reforms and better consumer and business sentiment. Timely completion of external debt restructuring will also support Sri Lanka's debt sustainability efforts. ADB Deputy Country Director for Sri Lanka, Utsav Kumar said, Sri Lanka has made commendable progress in implementing difficult policy reforms and stabilizing the economy in 2023. We are pleased to see the results of these reforms. With signs of recovery emerging, it is critical that Sri Lanka addresses the impact on the poor and vulnerable and also continues to implement reforms to address the underlying causes of the crisis and lay the foundation for fostering sustainable recovery, building resilience and reviving growth." Unquote. IMF under pressure to cut billions of dollars in fees for large borrowers. For years, the International Monetary Fund has collected billions of dollars in fees from its biggest borrowers, a practice that penalized those most in need. Now, with its coffers refilling and interest rates running high, the world's lend of last resort is considering giving them a break. The IMF released a statement last week saying that a number of its board members were open to reviewing policies around surcharges, the fees that it charges nations that borrow more than their allotted share or take longer to 
repay. The rates have climbed above 8% on some loans, with the burden carried by a handful of countries, including Argentina, Egypt and Ukraine, topping $6 billion. Brazil President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, as host of the Group of 20 this year, promised to make it a top issue amid his calls to reform the international financial system. The IMF describes the fees as a necessary part of its financial model, meant to discourage borrowing too much or taking too long to repay. Borrowers and their supporters say they drain resources needed for essentials such as food and health care and are increasingly punitive given faster inflation and higher interest rates. The board plans another meeting on the topic in June, according to people familiar with the process who asked not to be identified, discussing internal deliberations. The fees have been around for years, but higher global interest rates, particularly from the Federal Reserve and European Central Bank, mean that the total rate on some loans from the IMF is now more than 8%. That's double the level before the COVID-19 pandemic. Lanka Satosa further reduces prices. Lanka Satosa announced the reduction of prices for four essential commodities. The prices of sprats, imported Chinese onions, wheat flour and white kakulu rice have been reduced. The News First Finance Report. The weekly silent protest at the Liberty Circle took place today as well. Civil activists gathered at the Liberty Circle in Colombo to express their dismay over the lack of attention to pressing issues in the country. Last year, the last time, that is 2019, the deposit fee for the presidential election was only 50,000 rupees because I know I was a candidate. But this time it has been increased to million 2.6 rupees. Now this decision has been taken by a presidential, most likely presidential candidate, Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe. Now how can he increase it by 50 times? He himself is going to be contesting. And what is the right he has to increase the deposit? Because he knows very well he can afford it. He's going to be either coming from a coalition or he's going to come from the UNP. There are small parties who maybe they'll put forward a candidate, a very good one, a one who can take us away from this huge uh, debt crisis. But that man, may, woman may not be able to afford to be selected as a presidential candidate because they cannot afford the deposit fee. And this is totally against democracy. And therefore I say people should go to the Supreme Court, contest, contest this fee because we do not want to pay, uh, pay such a high fee. And especially coming from the most likely candidate presidential candidate of the coalition which has drawn this country like the Titanic has allowed it to sink deep into the ocean. We don't want anything like that to come forward. Activists held placards to express their dismay to the current state of affairs. Former football star O.J. Simpson acquitted of the infamous 1994 murders of his ex-wife and her friend has died at the age of 76. Now, This news was confirmed by his family. More stories from around the world on The World Today. South Korean opposition wins parliamentary vote in landslide. Elon Musk to visit India for meeting with Prime Minister Modi. World Bank unveils new scorecard to measure accountability. And on the world today, our top story is coming in from South Korea. Now, South Korea's Liberal Opposition Party has won a landslide majority in the country's general election to retain control of the parliament. Uh, the Democratic Party and smaller opposition parties jointly 192 of 300 seats in the National Assembly. The vote is uh, widely seen as a midterm referendum on President Yoon suk uh, who has three years left in office. Now, his party leader, Hang dong has resigned and Prime Minister Han Dak uh, So has offered to resign as well. This is a crushing defeat for Yoon and his People Power Party, which has been struggling to achieve its agenda in a legislature dominated by the DPK. The DPK's win uh, means that uh, they will be able to fast track and push legislation through parliament.
government. Both the DPK and the PPP use breakaway satellite parties to maximize their vote under South Korea's electoral system, which assigns some seats to smaller parties whose seats counts uh, fall short of their overall support. A man who has been making headlines on his own social media platform, Elon Musk, has announced on his social media platform X, formerly known as Twitter, that he will visit India to meet Prime Minister Narendra Modi without giving a date. Now, the Tesla boss is expected to announce major investment plans in the country soon. Last month, India cut import taxes on electric vehicles for global car makers which commit to investing $500 million and starting local production within three years. In uh, 2021, the Tesla boss uh, said that India's high import duties had prevented the firm from launching its cars in the world's fastest growing major economy. Musk wrote in a post, uh, quote unquote, looking forward to meeting with Prime Minister Narendra Modi in India. A senior Indian government official told the BBC that the meeting is scheduled for the last week of April and will take place at Modi's official residence in New Delhi. Taking a look at the latest update coming in from the World Bank, the World Bank Group unveiled a framework for measuring the results of its development work with 22 indicators in what a top official called an important advance in the bank's push to increase transparency and accountability. Anna Birde, the World Bank's Managing Director of Operations, said uh, the scorecard would allow its shareholders and the people it serves to better see measure and track the impact of uh, the bank's lending and grants. The scorecard includes 22 global indicators down from 150 on a previous instrument for poverty, prosperity and a livable planet, as well as themes such as gender equality, inclusion of youth and how people live in fragile conflict-affected areas. Uh, Birde said it will enable a closer look at development outcomes by adopting a more people-centric approach. She said the bank is still working out the detailed methodologies to calculate the scores in each of the 22 indicators, with half to be released in June and the rest in October. The first batch will include data on how many people have access to electricity worldwide and social safety net programs. The data will include transparent data broken down by gender, regions, age and whether the people are in fragile and conflicted affected countries. President Joe Biden has promised Israel ironclad U.S. support amid fears that Tehran could launch reprisals for an attack that killed senior Iranians. Biden warned that Iran is threatening to launch a significant attack after Israel struck the Iranian consulate in Syria 10 days ago. He added, quote unquote, we are going to do all we can to protect Israel's security. Earlier on Wednesday, Iran's leader said uh, the Israeli attack in Damascus was equivalent uh, to an attack on Iran itself. The German airline Lufthansa extended the suspension of its flights to Tehran due to the situation in the Middle East, which is on alert for Iranian uh, retaliation for a suspected Israeli airstrike on Iran's embassy in Syria. An Iranian news agency had published an Arabic report on the social media platform X, saying all airspace over Tehran had been closed for military drills, but then removed the report and denied issuing such news. Lufthansa said it had suspended flights to and to and from Tehran rather until probably 13th of April, extending its suspension by two days. U.S. President Joe Biden and Japan's Prime Minister have vowed to strengthen defense cooperation in the face of a potential threat from China. The plans announced by Biden and Fumio Kishida uh, during his Washington visit include an expanded air defense network incorporating Australia. Additionally, Biden said a Japanese astronaut would join NASA's uh, Artemis program to put people on the moon. The astronaut uh, will become the first non-American on the moon's surface. And that's all we have for you on the world today. Bringing you the news, I'm Hashni Pathirana. On today's edition of the News First Sports Roundup, the Sri Lanka Cricket Selection Committee has selected the 15-member women's squad for the upcoming T20 World Cup Global Qualifiers 2024. 
The 15-member squad will be led by Chamari Atapattu, while 15-year-old wrist spinner Sasha Nigimhan is also set to make her international debut for the women's team at the qualifiers. The tournament will take place from the 25th of April to the 7th of May 2024 in Abu Dhabi. The Sri Lanka team will reach Abu Dhabi directly from South Africa, where the team is currently engaged in a white ball tour. The squad includes Chamari Atapattu as captain Vishmi Gunaratna, Nilakshi De Silva, Harshita Samaravikrama, Kabisha Dilhari, Hasini Pereira, Anushka Sanjeevani, Udeshika Prabodhani, Inoka Ranavira, Achinikula Surya, Hansima Karnaratna, Kaubya Kavindi, Inoshi Fernando, Sugandiga Kumari and Sachin Gimhani. And that's a wrap of this edition's News First Sports Roundup. I'll see you soon with another edition. And with that, we wrap up Primetime News on TV1 for tonight. Thank you for watching. Good, Good night. night.